In this lesson, you're going to learn how to find the reference angle when you're given an angle in degrees or in radians. And we're going to talk about the formulas that you can use uh, to find that reference angle. So first, let's do some problems with degrees, and then we'll do some problems with radians. So with degrees, what you want to do is, when you're working with an angle, it's kind of like a spinner, right? Like if you spin it this direction, that's a positive angle. If you spin it clockwise, that's actually a, a negative angle. But just say, for example, here, we're gonna spin it uh, counterclockwise. If we spin it and you end up in this first quadrant, the reference angle is just theta, whatever the angle is that they give you. If you end up over here in the second quadrant, you can take 180 minus the angle to get your reference angle. Or if it's in radians, you do pi, which is the same as 180 minus the angle. If you're in the third quadrant over here, you just do the angle minus 180, or if you're in radians, you do the angle minus pi. And then if you end up in the fourth quadrant, you do 360 minus the angle, or two pi minus theta. Now, if you don't wanna use the formulas, what you can do is, wherever you end up, like you know, with the spinner, you spin it, it can go around as many times as you want, either direction, wherever you end up, that's called the terminal ray. You always wanna drop an, a perpendicular to the x-axis. Then you look at that angle that's formed between the terminal ray and the x-axis, that's your reference angle. It's always between zero and 90 if you're in degrees, or zero and pi over two in your, if you're in radians, and it's always positive. So for example, if I was ending up here in the third quadrant, I'd drop my perpendicular to the x-axis like that, and then that would be your reference angle. If you're over here, you'd go up to the x-axis, and that would be your reference angle. So let's go through some examples. I think you'll get a better feel for this. Say, for example, 120. So 120, we start here, it's positive, so we're gonna spin counterclockwise. 90, a little bit more is 120. So what I could do is I could drop a perpendicular and say how many more degrees does it take me to get to that x-axis? That's gonna be 60 degrees. Notice this is in between zero and 90, it's positive, that's our reference angle. Or you could say, well, I'm in the second quadrant, let me just do 180 minus the angle. 180 minus 120 is 60. So you can either use the formula or you can just do it a little bit more intuitively by drawing a sketch. That's what I like to do. For number two, let's look at 600. 600 is kind of interesting because 360 plus another 180, that's how much? 540 plus another 60, is gonna put you at 600, right? So what we did is we went all the way around and a little bit more, right? But when we dropped that perpendicular to the x-axis, that angle between the terminal ray and the x-axis was a 60 degree angle. Now, another way to do this is you could say, well, let's just subtract 360 from 600. So 600 minus 360 is 240 degrees. 240 degrees is here in the third quadrant, right? So if we take our angle minus 180, 240 minus 180 is 60 degrees. So you can use the formula, but these formulas only really work when it's a positive angle and it's in between zero and 360 or zero and two pi. So the third example, I actually gave us a negative angle, negative 100. So that means we're actually gonna be going what? Clockwise this time. So we're gonna go 90 plus 10 more, puts you at negative 100. If we drop a perpendicular, how many more degrees does it take to get to the x-axis? That's gonna be 80 degrees, not negative 80, because remember the reference angle is always positive, always between zero and 90 if you're working in degrees. But if you don't like that method and you prefer the formulas, you could just say, well, hmm, I'm gonna add 360, adding 360 or subtracting 360, that's just like going around you know, one direction or the other, a full revolution, you're gonna end up in the same spot, that terminal ray, so it's gonna be the same reference angle. See here at 240, right, and we're in the third quadrant, so again, we could say theta minus 180, 240 minus uh, 180 is, oh, I made a mistake here, this is 260 degrees. So we've got 260 minus 180, which is 80 degrees, and you can see that that's gonna be your reference angle. So same idea. Now let's do some in radians. Okay, number four, we have 11 pi over six. Sometimes what I like to do uh, is when it's improper like this, see how the numerator is greater than the denominator, is I like to convert it into a mixed number. So six goes into 11 once with five left over. So this is like one and five sixth pi. One pi we know is 180 degrees, right? Plus another five sixth pi, right? So almost five sixths, five sixths of pi is almost another 180 degrees. So that puts us right about here. Now if we drop a perpendicular to that x-axis, 
how much more did it take to get to that x-axis? That's 1 sixth pi, right? So that's going to be pi over 6, which is our reference angle. Now, if you want to use the formula, you could say, well, we're here in the fourth quadrant. We're in radians. We can take 2 pi minus theta. So we can say 2 pi minus our angle, which is 11 pi over 6. Now, 2 is like 2 over 1. If I multiply the numerator and denominator by 6, that's 12 pi over 6 minus 11 pi over 6, which is 1 pi over 6. So you see you're getting the same thing. One is just like more intuitive where you draw the sketch. Uh, let's look at number 5 now. This one's interesting because it's a negative angle. 8 over 3, that's improper. That's like negative 2 and 2 thirds pi, right? So negative angle, we're going clockwise. Negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, and 2 thirds of pi, which you write about there. If we drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, it takes another one-third pi, right? So our reference angle is pi over 3. Remember, it's always positive. When you do the reference angle, even though this was a negative angle, the reference angle is positive. And it's between 0 and pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90, but so between 0 and 90 degrees, 0 and pi over 2 in radians. But if you don't like that method, you can see we went around more than one revolution, right? So what I could do is I could say, well, hmm, negative 8 pi over 3 I want to make this into a positive angle. So let's just say I add 2 pi. Okay, 2 pi, if I multiply the numerator and denominator by 3, that's 6 pi over 3 plus negative 8 pi over 3. That's negative 2 pi over 3. It's still a negative angle. Let me add another revolution, another 2 pi. So that's really like adding 6 pi over 3 plus negative 2 pi over 3. That's 4 pi over 3, which is like 1 and 1 third pi, right? Which makes sense. See, 1 and 1 third pi. But if we're using our formulas now, you can see we're in the third quadrant and we're in radians. So theta minus pi, that's going to be our angle, 4 uh, thirds pi, or 4 pi over 3, minus pi, which is like pi over 1. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by 3, that's like 3 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 minus 3 pi over 3 is 1 pi over 3, which is pi over 3. That's the same thing we got here. So you can use the formula or draw a sketch. Number six, the last one here, 9 pi over 15. See, 9 fifteenths is what? Well, 9 is a little bit more than half of 15, right? So that means it's going to be a little bit more than halfway to pi. So it's going to be somewhere right around here in the second quadrant. So we could say, how much more does it take to get to, to pi here to the x-axis? Well, that would be another 6 pi over 15, which reduces to... 2 pi over 5. So that would be our reference angle, just drawing a sketch. But because we're in the second quadrant, we could use the formula pi minus theta, so pi minus 9 pi over 15. Pi is like pi over 1. If I multiply the numerator and denominator by 15, I get 15 pi over 15 minus 9 pi over 15, which is 6 pi over 15, which reduces to 2 pi over 5. And you know you get the same result. So Either draw a sketch or use the formulas, and you can find your reference angle. Now, what do we use reference angles for? Well, they're really handy when you're going to find values of trig functions on the unit circle. And I talk about mastering the unit circle in that video right there. So follow me over to that video, and we'll get some more practice with reference angles as well as using the unit circle.